Hey everyone, it's Luke here from LT Gaming, and I'm back with a should you buy of Peraspora. Let's set the scene for the game. So basically, the surface of Mars is littered with humanity's failed attempts to colonize its surface. This time will be different. This time, there's no room for human error. And that really sets the scene for the game, where you take on the role of an advanced AI managing the terraforming project on Mars. It's a very cool opening concept, and we'll find out whether they build on that into a great game. Right, let's get the important stuff out of the way. Drop down below, like, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate all of the interaction on the channel. Right, so I set the scene for Peraspora. You are this advanced AI managing the terraforming project on Mars. And what struck me about the gameplay was that it's very story driven, which I wasn't expecting for a base building game. Some of the characters you interact with along the way back at Earth Base or back at Mission Control are extremely well voice acted. There's a guy in it who sounds a little bit like Jeff Goldblum. And uh, yeah, there's some very interesting story elements. And that basically took me back that the game was so story driven and quite a lot of different reactions that you can have to the story. So straight off, I would highly recommend that for anyone who's into story-based elements. You start off as a very small colony, you have a couple of worker drones, and you build up your resources, but it becomes apparent very quickly that you have to keep expanding to um, progress in this game. It's very much about a macro level. Now, in the beginning, I would say that it was a little bit slow going, and I struggled with the game in the first few hours, but as... I got more and more into it, the game grew on me and I saw the potential for managing everything at such a macro level. You have to keep expanding and growing and managing all of your resource types. And then things are thrown at you from the story, you get into the combat element of the game, there's lots of exploration to be done, and then Mars starts to change right before your eyes as you melt the ice caps, raise the temperature of the planet, and water becomes available. Now this is a double-edged sword because a lot of my complexes started to flood and I had to rebuild them or reposition them. But there's this constant challenge which Mars throws at you. I really enjoyed the story elements because they reminded me of 2001 A Space Odyssey and the inner conflict going on within the AI during the game was really great and really did suck me in and I think that it's going to do that for you guys if you play as well. Graphically, I would say the game is not that impressive when you first look at it, but like everything with this game, on a micro level, it's not great. But when you zoom out and consider what you are managing from a macro level, the game starts to look a lot better. The map layered over the surface of Mars is truly beautiful and really reflects the different terrain and what you're dealing with and floodplains. And then when water starts to appear on the planet and greenery, it really does start to become an impressive game. This game is all about zooming out and taking things from a macro level. Very impressive. The sound in the game does a decent job of getting things across and the soundtrack was kind of just there. It didn't impress me, but it kept me relaxed and it didn't irritate me while I played. So on the sound front, I think it does a good job overall. The voice acting is superb and I really enjoyed some of the interactions that I have with different characters in the game, I won't spoil that, and then also the voice of Amy, the AI that you play, is also very well done. So top-notch voice acting, and the other sound effects, you know, they do their job. I'm not going to go crazy about them, but they definitely work in the context of the game. So what are the shortcomings of Peraspora? I would have to say that you need a lot of patience to play this game. It's very slow moving. I played most of my playthrough on times 8 and times 16 speed, which is the max, and even then, sometimes it was a bit of a drag. But for me, I often alt-tab in and out of games as I do other things, and it was perfect for that. So I would play an hour, I'd go do something else, I'd come back, and then I'd think about my next strategy or my next movement. Or sometimes I found myself getting a little bored of expanding and I'd lose the motivation to do so. When I took a break and came back, I was ready to expand my base. And the base you build is absolutely huge in this game. And you can build multiple bases, connect them with transport links, 
It really is a very macro focused game, as I've stated before. But there is definitely that element where sometimes you're going to think, well, what do I do next? You know, I'm waiting for the next event or the next research technology. Let's stick it on time 16 speed and just watch what happens. And you do find yourself doing that a lot in this game. Some gamers are not going to be into that. If you're a patient gamer like myself and you enjoy long-term strategy, then it really is a dream. If you're more into micromanagement and doing something every second of gameplay, it's not going to be for you. So what surprised me about Paraspora? I think in the beginning, my feelings on the game were kind of different. I found it a little slow. But as I played more, I got sucked into the story. I had a massive colony on Mars to manage. And I really enjoyed that macro level gameplay on a truly beautiful map of Mars. The replayability of Paraspora I think is actually pretty good. I would praise the developer for making me think about what my next playthrough would look like, how I would terraform the planet if I got to do it again, and then maybe not flooding my planet so early and ruining a lot of my structures, but maybe taking my time with that element. So I really do have to praise the game, and it definitely warrants more than one playthrough. And I think even one attempt at the game is going to take you between Hi, 10 Amy. and 20 hours, Just if you take your time. Everything's good on my end. One area that steadily. I think is particularly cool and will appeal to certain down. people is the science elements of the game. Raising the temperature of the planet, raising the pressure, melting the ice caps with different ways of doing so, crashing asteroids into your planet, importing ice, importing colonists, it really is a really cool approach to science. Now, I'm not saying that it's all correct and that it's all realistic, but it is a very approachable way of discussing these topics. All right, let's wrap this one up. What are my final closing thoughts on the game and should you buy it? Well, for me, the macro level management of Paraspora grew on me so much as I played that it's a definite buy. But you have to be a very patient sort of gamer, and you have to like these sort of strategy games. But it did do things that I've seen no other game attempt, and I really enjoyed that. The storyline, as I discussed, is really engaging, and something you should definitely experience if you're a science fiction fan. I've seen a lot of reviews for this game sitting around the 7 out of 10 or the 70% mark. For me, I'd bump that up slightly to an 8 out of 10. It's a definite should you buy for me. But with the caveat that if you're not into those sort of games and you're not a patient gamer and you don't want to sit there looking at the screen for a while as you fast forward, it won't be for you. So anyway, guys, I've been Luke from LT Gaming. Make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. All those abandoned missions around the planet. Mars's past raises too many questions for so few answers.